Good evening, everybody. I would like to welcome, obviously, our, our guest. I feel so privileged, you know, to be surrounded by uh, two stars, international stars, and I would like to thank them to, to be here and, and, and address you. We have entitled this uh, event uh, Construction Européenne uh, because I felt that uh, both uh, Luc Thomas and Rem Koulas could bring in their own perspective <coughs> on the European project. Europe is an incredibly admirable uh, ambition that was started in a very intelligent way, but it is now like a Greek shop. You know all these kind of Greek buildings where they built, because they have the money, they built the first part, but uh, there are the reinforcement uh, bars that are sticking out uh, and that are waiting for a better time to be kind of finished and constructed. And I think that uh, Europe is really uh, essentially a completely unfinished uh, machinery and that therefore um, the current uh, European governance is completely handicapped by this lack of completeness. A lot of politicians do not have an interest in culture, that's a fact. Because there are other preoccupations uh, which I can understand and uh, which are more within the technocratic field. But I think that if you want to create and build and change a mentality of course, there is an element of culture which is predominantly has to be there, not in a political way, but especially in a non-political way, and as being informed by a non-political body, which could be on an advisory level, architects, artists. And I don't think that artists or architects or, or people who are working creatively should be embedded in that structure. The reason that uh, the European Commission cannot have a, a vision of art or f officially a relationship uh, with art is that basically they are put in a cage where they can only deal or mostly deal with regulations and kind of financial uh, issues and si many things are simply taken away from them. What is doubly cruel is that those handicaps are reinforced by the national governments that are blaming them for everything which is uh, not right with their own countries. So it's a kind of machine of denigration and a machine of undermining what ought to be the center and what ought to be the governments. Culture is actually quite difficult to be generated within the European community because of these national entities. And that is quite astonishing that there is no element or some manner of regulating this thing and because culture is of course not just localized or local it goes above that i was in an indonesian school and when the teacher of geography um, didn't bother with individual countries but simply showed a continent and was talking about continent and so i suddenly was aware that actually there was something bigger than uh, uh, the the countries so it was basically the Indonesian teaching that uh, told me that there was Europe. By a lack of acknowledgement in terms of follow-up, for example, a lot of chances have been missed because Rem and I meet a lot of people all over the globe outside of Europe who don't have a problem with Europe because they think Europe is fantastic. I mean, Chinese people like Europeans because they need ideas also, as we also do. I'm actually also talking about the fact, what does the mainstream think about the European community? What is the visibility? What is the image of Europe? Is it the Euro, which is quite a feeble image? What image is it? I think it's high time to have a sort of meta-thinking on, on this on this division. And why should that not be possible, where actually most people in the cultural field, my field, already do that? On a mentality level, it should be acknowledged. It should, politicians should have at least, at least the decency to say that culture is important. Because otherwise, otherwise people get more and more stupid. I mean, we're in Brussels. Uh, we're in Belgium, by the way. The Museum of Fine Art is going to be closed for at least 13 years. The Museum of Contemporary Art, Modern Art in Brussels doesn't exist, it's not open yet, or is not there, basically. Uh, uh, then you go further to Boymans van Beuning, which is run by a nitwit, and then you go to the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, where the, the city fights over the contractors of the museum. All those things are culture, and they're not visible for more than 10 years. So this means you take out an entire generation, and you don't give them the chance to see this and that. And I'm just talking about actually important artworks, basically. So this, this is another element, the element of heritage, which of course should be 
regionalized, of course, should be held on to, because at least it has a spiritual, symbolic value. Those are elements which are totally and always underestimated when it comes to the reality of what they call the real. Also the fact that culture has always been seen as eating money and eating up subventions, which is not true, because we are part of the biggest revenue of this construction. And that can be proven statistically, black and white, on paper. So, so this is also another thing, to be apologetic. And I will never be there. come back to the element of excellence. It's a really important point, and it has been forgotten. And it's not, I don't say on an elitist level, I say it in terms of quality. And quality is also precision, and it's also focus. And a lot of focus has been lost because there's a multitude of elements, of course. And within this multitude, of course, you have to be focused, and you have to be relevant. The world relevant is also a world that's really important for the European community to think about as a metaphor. What is relevant? And there's always been this quite of interesting point that we're going to s sort of give more support to the new media because the new media, the new things, the gadgets are the good things. They're new. They're not new. They're just an application of something very old. That is what I mean. The great lack is the understanding of what something means. And I said the word relevant before, and of course all that is relevant, what you're saying, but it's already there. And you can promote it, and it's inter instrumentalizing. People do not have an inheritance, they also have a consciousness and a memory. And that is relevant, and out of that relevancy something new can be made. What do you mean? That's what Sparrow Agnew once said. Which is great, you know, that's really, really great. What do you, it's not what you, what you say, it's what you mean. All the other things are instruments, instruments that you use, part of the toolbox, but they by no means the end of the game. It is just, and of course that's why what Rem said in the beginning is important, and we come always back to that, to this one handicap, that we can, the European community is, in terms of legislation, not apt to sort of like interact in even a nation state run culture. From the minute that this bar barrier stays, you can do anything. It won't change anything at all. Because you're not touching the core, what it's about. And I think that's, like in most societies, been totally underestimated because it's seen as totally ridiculous and, and not important. But it is very important, of course. Right before I went into the meeting, I thought about the idea of the CIA. The CIA was a, a situation which was like formulated in 1947, but early in the early 50s, the Americans, being on top of the world, knew that they also needed a sort of cultural uh, expansion. This was, of course, ideological. It was the Cold War, blah, 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 but this, this was, and they, they, they took uh, abstract expressionism, which is at Jackson Pollock. And, Mar and Rodko, and of course they didn't say to, Mar to Rodko and Jackson Pollock they were going to do that. It was a covert operation because these people were very leftish and they were actually totally against the state, which is, shows the intelligence of an organization. So maybe the European community should do an overt cultural operation in place of a covert operation. I think you're also right to um, suggest that uh, all of this was triggered by the Cold War because there was the equivalent investment in art in the communist bloc and even in the kind of third world bloc there was a, a similar kind of awareness of the importance. In a certain way we are all uh, the victim of the uh, incredible uh, dedication to the uh, market economy because I think that the market economy can, and, and, and the way we were all involved in it uh, is one of the kind of really important uh, reasons why we are not and have not been involved and kind of bonded uh, with the le cultural layer. For that reason, we were all kind of removed from the public domain and from the public sector. And, and I think we somehow have to kind of find our way back to a situation where the public sector can take important initiatives. It is a futuristic and remains a futuristic and utopic yeah. program. And it has to be stressed. And that has to be said over and over and over again. Because I understand that once there is a crisis, and there is a really big crisis now, because 
it is either now it stagnates and it sort of starts to unravel or it continues. It's a critical point. I think what Europe needs is a rhetoric and uh, a, a powerful rhetoric for we've analyzed uh, the um, background of all the buildings in which the European process was housed and we discovered that basically it's all uh, developed by Belgian developers. So Europe has never taken an opportunity to kind of claim, okay, we will now be here and we will articulate what uh, Europe is really about and, and we will ourselves determine the kind of language in which we do that. Yeah. And also there we tried uh, a lot of uh, times to, to have a kind of positive influence or to try to find a language in which Europe could be kind of represented in Europe. And there we, one member of the jury was representing the European Commission and basically he all he wanted was to not be noticed. Yeah, uh, all he wanted also for the European buildings was, was not to be noticeable, because if they would be noticed, the hostility factor would only be bigger. So he simply looked at the greatest kind of possible amount of camouflage, and it, it was really a heartbreaking moment uh, because it, it, it turned you, know, you. It gave a kind of sense of the hopelessness of the whole effort. In order to communicate, you need a narrative. And, and I think that the narrative should be constructed and should be honestly constructed. There is also so much kind of double talk yeah. in the kind of description of Europe that you know, could, there are so many politically correct uh, things piled on top of each other that in the end, if you look at the kind of structure, you say, I mean, that's not Europe because that's simply a sum of politically correct uh, kind of statements. Europe is not a brand, I think. Europe is something, a much larger idea. I, I also think so, and in, in, in coming to the idea of a narrative, there's one part of the American Constitution which was actually, as I said, largely made by Europeans, although a small locality within the Europe, which is the Scots. And they made sure there was one sentence in the American Constitution, which is quite odd because it's in no other Constitution, that every man has to be allowed, or, or every human being has to be allowed, the pursuit of his own happiness, which is an interesting, strong, Mm. narrative and line and quite independent within mm. its way I mean so it's that type of element that should be embedded there should be a, a, a leadership that is no longer depending upon the sheer uh, nation-state agendas mm. a larger agenda should be set and I think it will and has to be set in order for Europe to survive it but it should also be communicated and it should be communicated with a certain urgency to all the nation states and especially their citizens in order that they can see what it is to be a citizen in terms of having a civic sense, by the way, that surpasses your borders, which makes every individual and gives him the chance to be part of that Europe that is under construction. Who, who is eloquent enough, but who also credible enough to really make that communication? That seems to, to me the, the really crucial issue. I'm trying, but, but I, I see very few colleagues, kind of either from the arts sector or from kind of related sectors, actually talking about Europe or addressing Europe as a... And, and I, I'm trying, knowing full well that you know, what I'm trying is kind of slightly pathetic and slightly... Uh, ridiculous, but uh, I, I find it an honor, nevertheless, to, to be to take the risk of ridicule, you know, in this uh, cause. Um, to develop a narrative which is compelling, which can be told in 20 minutes, and which uh, has has a kind of visual kind of language to to convey it, would also be very productive. I think. I would love to be a ghostwriter. For, for one, one, one presentation. <laughs> <laughs>